Hey guys, it's Heath Hall with Pork Barrel Barbecue. Welcome to Washington, D.C., home of Pork Barrel Barbecue. Today we're going to be showing you some great backyard recipes that are just really good for, be it summertime when you're wanting to have a barbecue or if there's some event like the Super Bowl, some of these are really great for that. Uh, why am I doing this? Well, we're a competition barbecue team, Pork Barrel Barbecue. We cook all over the country. Uh, we're also a restaurant uh, here in Washington, D.C. called Pork Barrel Barbecue. Uh, if you get a chance to come, please visit us. It's in Alexandria, Virginia. And uh, basically we're doing it because we just love food and sharing food and really think that food and barbecue is about community and community is about sharing exper experiences and uh, there's really uh, no better experience than a great meal. So hopefully you'll enjoy what we're going to be doing for you today. Uh, I think we've got some really fun recipes. So uh, sit back and enjoy and try these at home. Everybody loves a nice, cool, refreshing drink on a hot summer day, and this is a great spin on a classic pina colada. It's a grilled pina colada. So we're taking a fresh pineapple here. We're just going to trim this guy off. So we're going to take the top off, take the bottom off, and then we're going to cut the, the sides. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a 14-ounce can of condensed milk and two cups of flaked sweetened coconut. Um, we're going to put that on the gas grill back here and cook that off. Um, we don't want it to boil. We want it to just start simmering on the edges. Uh, then what we're going to do after we get these grilled is we're going to put them in the freezer for about an hour so they get frozen, which is going to make part of our frozen uh, drink. We also want to cool the milk uh, coconut mixture so that it's nice and chilled when we make this. So once you get it pretty well cleaned off, we're going to cut these in about one inch rounds. We're going to take our grill over here. And over a direct heat, we're going to take these pieces of coconut, or sorry, pineapple, and we're going to grill them off for approximately four minutes on each side. We want them to get really nice and caramelized. So if, it may take a little bit longer depending on the heat of your fire, it may take a little bit less. We want to get some nice grill marks on there and start that caramelization process. So while that's going, we're going to take our pan, put it over a, a warm fire here. Again, we're going to use two cups of sweetened coconut. Now, you, I, I am a guy who likes to cook by feel and taste. I don't all the time cook with teaspoons and tablespoons and cups. But it's up to you, you know, really, to, if you're doing that, to determine the flavor that you're looking for. Whether you're looking for something really sweet or something really spicy in food. But we'll have the recipe here for you which has worked for me. But if you like it a little bit more coconutty, there's no problem putting more coconut in it. If you like it a little more pineapple-y, there's no problem putting a little more pineapple in there. So over a medium fire, you want to let this come to just a simmer around the edges. And this is going to take probably five or six minutes out here to, to get to where we want that. So uh, while we're waiting on that, we're going to flip our uh, pineapple here in a, a couple more minutes and uh, then we'll show you what we do after that. So we've been grilling these pineapples for about eight minutes now, flipping them over. Um, you know, you want to get some char on them, get that caramelization going. We're going to bring them over here to our cutting board, and we're going to uh, dice these up into cubes of a, a roughly three quarters of an inch to an inch. Doesn't have to be an exact science because they're going to get blended up here eventually, but uh, we don't want to make them too big where it's going to take longer than an hour to freeze. So we're just going to come over here and cut them off the core. 
and then just cut them into cubes. And then we're gonna take a, just a cookie sheet and we're just gonna set them on a cookie sheet, which we'll put into the freezer. So pretty simple process here so far. Actually, that's the core. So we're gonna finish those off, but I also just wanna kinda of show you here. We've got our coconut milk mixture here, which we're going to now also put in the refrigerator and let that cool down. And uh, I would say probably in another hour to an hour and a half, all these should be frozen and this should be cooled down and uh, we'll be able to make our grilled uh, pina coladas. All right, so we have got our pineapple for our frozen pina coladas here that are grilled. Uh, we've taken these and had these in the, the freezer for several hours now. So they're, as you can see, they're frozen together, which is gonna help as our frozen component to our pina colada. So just stick those into your blender. And then we also have our condensed milk and coconut. And of course I forgot to bring a spoon, so we will just use this. It's gonna be kind of thick. This has been chilling in the refrigerator along with the pineapple. And we've got two and a half cups of ice. We have three quarters cup of rum. one quarter cup of pineapple juice, and then a couple of tablespoons of agave nectar. So we'll just kind of eyeball that. Stick our lid on. Start the process here. ourselves a couple nice cold drinks for a nice warm summer barbecue and then I I saved a few of the rounds that we had grilled and just uh, put one of those in each for a nice garnish and there you go grilled frozen pina colada cheers we're gonna make a real simple all-purpose rub for you today. This is great on everything from pork and chicken to beef and vegetables, uh, everything in between. It's real simple. Use it on anything you got. And these are probably ingredients you've got in your basement or in your pantry or kitchen at home. Now, you know, you can always go buy our award-winning all-purpose spice rub uh, sold at porkbarrelbbq.com or all over the country in grocery stores. Uh, or you can go buy some of the other great pre-made rubs, but it's also fun to mix and match up some of your own rubs. And whether you like something hot or sweet, you can do uh, a little bit more sugar or a little bit more heat. Um, so it's really up to you and your family to figure out what you like. But today, this is a real nice, simple, basic one. We're gonna take uh, one third cup of turbinado sugar. You could use brown sugar as well. Brownulated brown sugar works really great. And this is a great tip. We're gonna mix this in a mason jar, just a, a nice canning jar. Uh, it's an easy thing to mix in and shake up and really get things uh, in, in, integrated. And it's also a nice way to store it once you're done. So we're just gonna pour in one third cup turbinado sugar, one third cup kosher salt, and I would suggest kosher salt over a standard table salt. If you don't have kosher salt, but you have sea salt, uh, coarser grind, that would be fine too. Uh, one third cup of granulated garlic, not garlic powder, but granulated garlic. And one third cup of smoked paprika. Uh, really nice smoky element to that. Not a ton of heat, but nice smoke and nice color. Uh, then we've got um, 
a third of a cup of black pepper, cracked black pepper, and then a quarter of a cup of granulated onion. Then we've got two tablespoons of chipotle powder, nice heat element, a little smoke. Two tablespoons of ancho, again, nice smoke element, uh, fruity, kind of like a, a, a spicy raisin. Uh, one tablespoon of cumin and two teaspoons of mustard powder. Now, you know, this also is a nice little Christmas gift or something. You know, it's kind of cool. You can uh, put the lid on and uh, ship it that way. It looks kind of cool. Or if you want to use it, put the lid on and you simply shake it up real good for about 30 seconds to really integrate all those spices and all that flavor in there. And spices will keep for about two years um, if you keep them in a, a nice airtight and dry environment. Of course, that's two years from whenever you bought these spices, not two years from whenever you made your spice rub. So if you've had the spices setting in your basement for a year, then you probably got another year or so. There we go. A real nice, simple, all-purpose rub. You could use this on anything from barbecue ribs to chicken. Or you could use it inside your house uh, and put it in fried chicken batter or on a pot roast. Um, just experiment and have fun with it. If you want it a little sweeter, add some more sugar elements, some more sweet elements. If you want it a little spicier, add some more heat elements. A little herbaceous, you could add some oregano or basil. Just have fun. It's, uh, you know, worst thing that happens, you throw this away and you start over. So there you go, all-purpose spice rub. We're gonna do a non-classic take on barbecue chicken today. Instead of slathering it with a a nice rich tomato based sauce. We're going to do a lighter version which is a grilled rosemary lemon chicken. It's a really delicious summer meal. It's a little bit lighter than the traditional barbecue chicken that you're used to and it's just a really nice way to, to spend a Sunday out at the grill. A nice Sunday meal. Now we're in my backyard here, my herb garden. Uh, we're going to cut a little bit of rosemary here for it. Now if you don't have a rosemary bush in your backyard don't despair. Grocery stores today have all kinds of great fresh herbs, so you can probably get it there. Uh, you could probably use dry, uh, but you, if you do use dry, use the whole leaf. Don't use the powder. Um, and probably you might want to, to use a little bit more because you might not have quite the fresh flavor that this is. But if at all possible, try to get fresh. So let's go um, back to the grill and do some grilled rosemary lemon chicken. All right, so we're here at our table about ready to do our grilled rosemary lemon chicken. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the zest of one lemon. Uh, this is going to make our nice wet marinade that we're going to use to stuff inside the chicken uh, between the skin and the meat. Now, if you don't have one of these handy microplanes, it's a tool I would suggest getting. It's a great, uh, great way to zest if you're doing cheese like a parmesan cheese it does real good and you don't want to get this white skin that's really bitter you just want to get that top layer of flesh that has all the essence and oils in it of of whatever the citrus may be lemons or limes or oranges so it's a it's a good 10 12 dollar investment if you don't have one if you don't have one you want to do this the best way to do it would be to take your lemon and just try to make really thin like I say you don't want to get a lot of this white here and then you would just simply julienne this and then come back through and chop it up like so a lot more difficult not as even a lot longer work so invest in a microplane great great product we're going to cut our two lemons in half and get our juicer. And we're going to juice these two lemons in here. Again, another really great tool is one of these citrus juicers. Another not super expensive five, ten dollar investment that you will utilize frequently in the kitchen. 
Now, you might notice there's a few seeds in there. I'm not really worried about that. Those are gonna, yeah, I mean, you can pull them out if you want, but uh, they're not gonna kill anything. Now we're gonna take four cloves of garlic and we're going to get them into a nice little paste. We don't want real big pieces of garlic in this. We just want to get that nice garlic flavor throughout the chicken. Now, one thing that I forgot to bring over here is some salt, which really helps make this paste. If you lay down a little bit of salt and then you just kind of work it back and forth on that salt, it's going to be a much finer paste than I'm probably going to get right here. This will probably work for us, so take that, get all of that good garlic flavor, put that in there. Then we're going to take a few sprigs of the rosemary we just cut. This is the fresh rosemary from the garden. We're going to strip the leaves off the stems. And we're going to finally chop this up. Again, we don't want real big pieces in there. We want to get a nice even chop that evenly coats the meat. The knife we're using today is called a Santuku knife. It's similar to a chef's knife, but I find it to be a lot more versatile and easy to use. It's a Japanese style blade. Uh, this is uh, from the Wustoff company, but there are a number of, of good ones out there. and. Uh, they tend to be considerably cheaper than a good chef's knife. So we've got our, our little mixture here that we're going to eventually put inside of the chicken. The final thing we need is four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. If you're feeling really good and want to really make this kicked up, you can substitute four tablespoons of butter. Um, it's going to be a little bit richer flavor, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So I'm just going to take my tablespoon and stir that up. I'm going to set that to the side for a second, and we're going to come over here to our chicken. So we have just a standard whole fryer that you get at the grocery store. Um, probably three, four pound uh, chicken is what you're looking for. And uh, we're going to take the backbone out here. And you want to have a nice, nice sharp knife, or you can also have poultry shears, which also actually sometimes work a little bit better. So we got about half cut. Now, anytime you're working with chicken, you want to be really careful because obviously you can uh, have a lot of issues with chicken, uh, raw chicken, if you don't clean up after yourself. So we're just going to throw this away. I'm going to kind of bust the back there and where that lays out nice and flat. This, the good thing that this is going to do is going to cut your cooking time down considerably because you've now got twice the surface that you had before when you're going to be cooking. We're going to take our fingers, really get underneath the skin and loosen it up. This is where we're going to be sticking our wet marinade that we just made. So now we just kind of take our bowl, pour that in there, really work that into the chicken. If you have a little bit extra left over, and it's okay to just put it over the top. Get a towel again when you're working with chicken. You want to always be cleaning your hands and surfaces uh, so you're not contaminating different things. We're now going to take 
our All American Spice Rub. This is our uh, rub, our pork barrel rub. Uh, you can get this in a lot of grocery stores around the country or you can get it at porkbarrelbbq.com. Uh, it's a blend of 14 herbs and spices. It has a nice smoky flavor to it. Uh, it's no sugar in it uh, and it's fairly low in sodium for a rub. Uh, if you don't have this, you can certainly make your own or you can uh, use one of the other you know, great rubs that are out there. Uh, Dizzy Pig's got some awesome rubs, for example. Uh, OBQ, so there's a lot of great rubs out there, but try to find this, it'll help us out. We're just gonna sprinkle this over the chicken, kind of a medium to medium heavy covering. And don't forget, there's another side here. Now you can let this set for 10, 15 minutes to really start working into the meat and penetrating the meat, or you can throw it right on the grill. Um, it's not gonna be that much different. Um, we're gonna just go ahead and stick this on the grill right now here. So we've got our Weber kettle set up for a two zone cook. We've got a hot fire here and a, a cool spot over here. We're gonna take this skin side down directly over the fire. And we're gonna let that cook uncovered for about four to five minutes. We wanna get a nice crisp skin on that. Uh, start caramelizing those uh, sugars and things. 65 or so um, for chicken to be ready. So we'll let this uh, crisp up here for a few more minutes and uh, we'll uh, revisit the chicken here in a bit. All right, so we had our bird over the direct flame for about four minutes or so. Got this nice char, starting to get some good color on it, a little crispness. Um, we'll flip it over, and we're gonna cook it the rest of the way over an indirect fire. Uh, at this point, too, I, I, I failed to mention, you could add some wood to this fire if you want. We're using a, a hardwood-based uh, charcoal briquette today, uh, but you could throw some oak or some hickory, uh, on there, some fruit wood, whatever kind of woods you like. Um, today we're just using the charcoal, but uh, it's something definitely that can add another dimension of flavor to your meat. So we're going to now uh, cover this guy up with the lid and uh, let it cook uh, for about half an hour or so, and we'll check the temp on it then. And uh, that'll give us a good gauge of about how much further along uh, we need to go. Uh, like I said, it's probably going to be a 45 minute to a 60 minute cooking process to get this up to. Uh, about 165 so we'll check on her here in about 30 minutes all right so we are now going to go back to our rosemary lemon grilled chicken it's been on now for about an hour and uh, we're looking pretty good here so we're going to go ahead and take her off and bring her over to our cutting board now you could serve this several different ways. You could just put that right on your serving tray and that would make a nice presentation. Or you can go ahead and cut it up into several pieces. So cut it down the middle here. And come in here, lift up the leg and cut that quarter off. Cut our wing off. And we should try to cut our wing off. Not the prettiest job of cutting a wing off, but it will eat. And we have our breast there. Maybe we'll try to do the wing first this time. There we go. Another wing. Another breast. And yeah, you can serve this with um, any of the sides we're doing today or this would be great with some mashed potatoes um, or some uh, potatoes on the grill uh, and it's really just a great Sunday dinner so uh, enjoy the recipe uh, it's a nice simple take on barbecue chicken that doesn't involve uh, the barbecue sauce but involves a nice light dressing uh, essentially of rosemary and lemon juice and a little olive oil we're gonna now make a Carolina vinegar barbecue sauce. If you've ever been down to Lexington, North Carolina, uh, you've probably had something very similar. This is kind of inspired by the sauces that 
Uh, we found when we've traveled down there to cook barbecue contests that we've really loved. Um, but it's got some of the more Eastern Carolina flair to it. It doesn't have any of the tomato uh, base that you might find in uh, some little ketchup or tomato paste in the ones in Lexington. This, however, is closer to a Lexington sauce. This is our Carolina vinegar sauce. It's our brand new sauce. Just came out uh, earlier this summer. It's a uh, really killer on pulled pork, as is this one we're about to make. And the thing I love about this sauce is it's really quick, really easy. Uh, you don't have to do any cooking. It's just about uh, six simple ingredients. Again, we're gonna use a ball, a uh, wide mouth canning jar. Um, the thing about the sauce I recommend is at least let it set for a week or two before you use it. Uh, the longer you let it set, the more complex flavor it's gonna get. Uh, the longer you let it set, the more heat you're gonna extract from these red pepper flakes. So it's real simple, just three cups of simple white distilled vinegar. And we're gonna pour that in here to our mason jar. One quarter cup of dark brown sugar. Uh, we've got two tablespoons of kosher salt, two tablespoons of crushed red pepper flakes, two tablespoons of hot sauce. Uh, you know, use your favorite cayenne-based hot sauce. Uh, this one has uh, got a little garlic flavor in it as well. And then one tablespoon of cracked black pepper. Put our lid on our jar and then shake for about 30 seconds to really incorporate all of those flavors, all those ingredients, let that brown sugar break down a little bit. And like I said, take this, this doesn't even have to be refrigerated, take this and set it in a, uh, a cool, dry place, uh, maybe in your basement. Um, you can put it in the refrigerator, but let it set for, I say, at least a week to two weeks. You could use it immediately, but it's not going to have the flavor that it's going to have in a couple of weeks. But uh, pre-make that, you know, you could make a, a couple of these up, let them set, and then when you go and you do a full pork butt or pork shoulder, a whole hog, uh, ribs, um, it's great on pulled chicken sandwiches, but it makes a really, really killer uh, dressing on any of those pork uh, sandwiches that you're doing. And also, speaking of dressings, it's a nice base for a vinaigrette. Uh, take this with a couple tablespoons of uh, Dijon mustard and, and say uh, three or four tablespoons of this, and it makes a real nice vinaigrette to uh, dress some salad with. So there you have it, a real simple Carolina-style barbecue sauce. It took about two minutes to make. In two weeks, you're gonna have a killer sauce for your pulled pork sandwiches. There's nothing better than a good fresh ear of corn in the summer, and this is a great way to do something different than just having corn on the cob. This is a grilled corn and avocado salad with a lime cumin vinaigrette, and it, it's a really, really delicious uh, summer side dish, great salad. So we've got some corn over here on the grill, and we cooked this in the husk for about five and a half, six minutes. And we took the husks off. We wanted to get some nice char on the corn. So we're going to pull the corn off here, let it cool just a little bit while we assemble the rest of the salad. So it's pretty easy. We're going to take two avocados and we've just halved them. And this is about one and a half, maybe two cups, depending on the size of your avocado. And this is a great technique here for dicing. Simply take your knife and do a cross hatch pattern, then get yourself a spoon, and there you go, you got a nice dice on your avocado. We'll do that a couple more times for you here. So just take your knife, and you wanna make sure that you don't cut through the skin, but just a set of straight lines one direction and then go right across it for cross hatch, and then make sure you don't get this stem. No one wants to eat the avocado stem. And then just a spoon. And there you go. It's, if you're making guacamole, how, whatever you're doing with avocados, it's just a quick, easy way to get your avocado diced up. In a fairly uniform size. All right. Next. 
Next, we've got two limes that we're going to juice just right over the top here. And again, you know, if you don't have one of these handy juicers, it's a good five or six, ten dollar investment, depending on how nice of one you get. This one actually has two different juicing compartments, one here for the lime and one for the lemon. So you have both sizes in one, which is pretty nice to have. Then we've got about two cups of tomatoes. Um, these are cherry tomatoes that we've just cut in half. We've got red and yellow ones today. We're going to put those in there. Then we've got about a half of a cup of diced red onion and about an eighth of a cup of cilantro that we've cut up. So go ahead and get that in your bowl. All right, now let's get the corn off the husk. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can just go straight down like that, or you can go on the side. And these are pretty warm, so I'm going to put my glove on to help. Now the char, you really want that nice char on the corn. And I like to make sure you get the sides. That's where a lot of the nice corn milk is, which is just super good flavor. Now out here in DC, we are pretty lucky. We get the Delaware white corn, which I think is some of the best corn you can buy. It's, it's so sweet and it's just really tender, really delicious stuff. But uh, you know, wherever you're at, um, this time of year, you know, in the summertime, you can usually find really good corn. Um, peaches and cream is a nice corn. It's a part white, part yellow ear of corn that's really tasty. All right, so we've got our corn all taken off the cob. Now you can do this, you know, if you have the grill going, say, uh, a couple days in advance that you want, uh, want this salad, you can certainly go ahead and grill the corn and have that uh, ready to go. So we're going to put all this corn in the bowl. And then we've got a pretty simple dressing. Two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, uh, eighth of a teaspoon of granulated garlic and eighth of a teaspoon of cumin we're going to put in there. We're going to use some agave. We're going to use about a tablespoon. You could use honey. Then just a, a little bit of, of salt and pepper to taste. So you might you know, need to do this a couple times after you've mixed it up and just make sure it's where you want it. And then we just mix this up. Real good. Give it a little taste. Maybe just a touch more black pepper. I think the salt is good. And there you go, a real simple summer salad of corn and avocados and a cumin lime vinaigrette. Uh, really good with a steak, uh, any kind of beef, but uh, good with just about any barbecue on the side. So give it a try this summer while corn is still fresh, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. We're going to be making a grilled vegetable ratatouille uh, for our next dish. This is a really, really great dish for either a side or an entree, especially if you have friends coming over that are vegetarians. Uh, oddly enough, this is our number one downloaded recipe on our website, porkbarrelbbq.com. Uh, it's a, like I say, a great dish that's very versatile and one of the things I encourage folks to do with this dish is to use seasonal ingredients, things that are fresh, things that you can find at your farmer's market or that look really good at the grocery store. Today we're using 
uh, some bell peppers. We have orange, uh, red, and yellow. We're using some beautiful yellow zucchini that I got uh, at the farmer's market. Uh, some green zucchini, some red onions, some eggplant, uh, some baby bella mushrooms, uh, some cherry tomatoes, both yellow and red. Uh, but you can use things like corn, or you could use asparagus, green beans, whatever happens to be fresh, local, and looking good. So real simple, we're going to take a little extra virgin olive oil and just be fairly generous in sprinkling it across all of these vegetables so that we get a nice binding agent for our spice rub that we're going to put on here. Now if you don't have a pre-made spice rub like we're going to be using today, we're going to be using our pork barrel all-American spice rub. You could use something as simple as garlic, um, black pepper, and salt, or any, any rub that happens to be in your kitchen at that time that you think would add a nice flavor. Our rub is uh, got 14 herbs and spices in it. It's got a little heat to it, a little smoke to it. Um, there's some herbs in it. So it's a real nice complement to vegetables. And you want to be fairly generous in your application of the rub. Now when we get these on the grill, we'll season the other side as this side is cooking. Just a little bit on the mushrooms, not too much, and then a little on the tomatoes. And we'll mix these tomatoes up with our hands to get that olive oil. Now you're gonna have different cooking times. So we're gonna put on the zucchini over direct fire here. The zucchini is gonna cook the longest. And then we're gonna put our bell peppers on. They'll cook the second longest. This is a good, oh, guess we won't be using that one. This is a good dish to make with a friend if you have a friend cooking with you. Um, that way you can have somebody turning while the other person is kind of monitoring the vegetables so they don't burn. But if you're doing it by yourself, just kind of do it in shifts. When you get those nice char marks on there, they don't take too long to do. And once we get some of these char marks on here, we're actually going to move them over here and let them cook a little bit longer on the indirect fire. Now you can use, like I said, this could be a great side dish, it can be a great entree. Uh, you can use leftovers of this to make a nice pasta the day after using the leftover ratatouille. And we've got a real nice hot fire, I can assure you today. <laughs> So really, yeah, be creative in using these vegetables. Uh, you know, you could do a pasta salad uh, with it. So you could um, do a cold, cold dish with these after uh, you use them the first time. So we're gonna let our vegetables cook a little bit and uh, we'll come back and uh, show you what they look like when they're all. Uh, the tomatoes take about 90 seconds to two minutes to do and uh, you want to manage them real fine because they will cook very fast. So don't go do anything else while you're throwing them on or you will come back to disintegrated or very black tomatoes. 
And we want, you know, we want some black on them. We want some char with that smoke flavor, that char flavor on them. But at the same time, we want them to not taste as if they were charcoal. All right, so we got the good char on them all. We're gonna now close the lid here for a couple minutes and uh, let them finish cooking. As you're finishing up your vegetables on the grill, letting them cook, uh, you wanna make this nice little dressing for the ratatouille. It's, it's pretty simple. It's one half cup of extra virgin olive oil. It's two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. It's two tablespoons of fresh oregano that's been finely chopped. It's one quarter cup of fresh chopped basil. And then it's also got four diced and minced garlic cloves in it. So we're just gonna put that in there, kind of stir that around, and we're gonna use this to dress the ratatouille. So now let's head over to the grill. I'm gonna get my glove, because it is a hot, hot grill. And we're gonna pull off our vegetables here. So we've got our eggplant and uh, bell peppers. Nice and charred, tender. More eggplant. Our mushrooms, which are one of my favorite parts of this dish are the mushrooms. I just love grilled mushrooms. And again, you know, be creative, get whatever is in season, what looks good at the market. Um, you know, if, if you don't like eggplant, leave it out the eggplant and add asparagus. Or if you like zucchini, do twice as much zucchini. That's really kind of up to you and your taste buds and what you and your family enjoy. Set that down. Got some of the red pepper red onion. Uh, we had the yellow and, and orange pepper also in addition to the red one. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to dice these up into bite-sized pieces. So we'll take, take for example our zucchini, maybe cut that in half and then just dice that right up. Push that off to the side. Again, you know, this is kind of a rustic dish, so it doesn't have to look uniform. These are our yellow zucchinis. We got some of our bell pepper here. And again, we're just mixing all this together in the bowl, so nothing has to be done individually. It can all be done and put together. These are our eggplant pieces here. So I'm gonna get some space on here. Take some of our mushrooms. Now these, you know, you can leave them whole. I like to kind of cut them in half. Nothing fancy again. Doesn't have to be uniform pieces. We've got a, a rustic presentation, rustic dish we're doing here. So just kind of chop them up into smaller pieces. And uh, we'll pull some of our red onion over here. Again, just kind of a rough, rough chop. And we'll put a little bit of our tomato mixture in here. Again, we've used some red and some yellow. They were what looked good. Um, this is a great time of year to get some of those really interesting heirloom cherry tomatoes, like the black cherry or the, the lump, lemon lime. So if you got access to those, by all means, use those.
So we'll kind of mix that together. We'll take some of our dressing here, put that on top, just like so. And then we'll mix it up, be, be gentle. And there you have it, a grilled vegetable ratatouille. Some of the finest uh, fresh ingredients of the season in there. Uh, think of it as a side dish, think of it as an entree for uh, your vegetarian friends or if you're just looking for a vegetarian meal. Uh, and also think about what you can do with it the next day. Uh, make up some uh, pasta and uh, put this in with your pasta and you'll have a nice grilled vegetable ratatouille pasta. Uh, you could do it warm or cold and it makes an excellent picnic dish. You can serve this warm, you can serve it room temperature, or you can serve it cold. Very versatile dish. Delicious use of summer fresh produce. Go out and try it, grilled vegetable ratatouille. If you've ever been to Philadelphia, you've probably had a cheesesteak sandwich, the favorite food of Philadelphia. There's a second sandwich that's maybe a little lesser known, but not any lesser in taste. It is one of my favorite sandwiches. It's the Philadelphia roasted pork sandwich. And uh, we're gonna do our own take on this today. We're gonna grill it. Essentially what you do is you got a pork loin or a pork tenderloin. We've got two pork tenderloins here today. Some broccoli rabe or broccolini. Um, a little bit of a wet marinade. We're going to grill off the loins. We're going to uh, tenderize these by putting them in some boiling water for a few minutes. Then we're gonna saute them off in some olive oil, crushed red pepper flakes and garlic to give them a nice little uh, kick. And uh, we'll have a nice piece of crusty Italian bread with some smoked provolone cheese to assemble our sandwich. So let's get started with the, uh, the first thing, which is our wet marinade. Uh, we've got three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, uh, one and a half tablespoons of kosher salt, one tablespoon of cracked black pepper. Then we have rosemary that's been finely minced up from three sprigs and then we have garlic from four cloves of garlic. And then you know, just get in there with your hand and make this nice wet paste here. Should look something kind of like that. It's not gonna be real liquidy, it's gonna be more paste-like. And then get your, get your pork loins and then just rub this in real good. Get it in all the crevices all over the place and this this is a good enough for these are two kind of small pieces or one big full loin uh, this recipe here will produce enough paste for now what I traditionally like to do is to take these and put them in a bowl or a dish wrap it in some plastic wrap and stick it in the refrigerator for a couple hours or even overnight to really let this start working in the meat. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and throw these right on the grill, which you can do, but again, uh, if you have some time to let them rest with this on there, it's only going to allow those flavors to penetrate and you're going to get a, a much nicer, deeper flavor. So we're going to take these over to our grill and over a direct fire, we're going to set them on there for a couple minutes on each side to give it a chance to really get a nice crust. And then we're going to finish the cooking in an indirect heat uh, for probably these are gonna be somewhere around 25 to 30 minutes. And uh, in the meantime, uh, we're getting some water boiling back here and we'll show you what we do to make the broccoli rob topping for the uh, sandwich. <laughs> All right, so we are back and we've got our Pork loin's going real well. Take a look at those guys. Uh, they've been on for about 15, 20 minutes now. Probably have another 10 or so minutes to go on those. So we're gonna go ahead and do the second part, um, which is the topping for this. Uh, we've got some broccoli rabe, broccolini here. Um, I'm gonna just kinda trim off a little bit of the real thick stems on this. Uh, it's okay to have have some on here, but some of these are pretty thick. So if you see anything like, like this here, that's uh, looking too much like full broccoli. We don't want that. Um, but anything that's not nearly that thick is, is fine. 
we're going to throw these over here into our water. And we're going to blanch these guys for a few minutes. Get them nice and tender. Uh, really get some of that nice green color out of them. And then we're going to take them and saute them with some olive oil, some crushed red pepper flakes, and some garlic. So while this is starting to braise down, uh, we are going to get some garlic here and just take a couple cloves and get that all ready to go. So this is a great little, you know, if you got a tailgate party, um, these are great little sandwiches for that, or, you know, if you're doing something at home for the big game, these are great for that. They're pretty quick. Uh, they're a little bit different than what you normally find, and uh, they're very tasty. And over here, we've got some smoked provolone. Uh, you can use whatever kind of cheese you like. Uh, it doesn't have to be smoked, but I think the smoked just gives it a nice extra, extra kick, a uh, nice little smokiness to it. So we're going to mince up the garlic fairly fine. One more run through them. Come over and check out our greens here. Probably need a couple more minutes on those. So uh, we'll let these cook here for a couple more minutes so they can get uh, really nice and uh, uh, pull that green color out, get a little bit uh, easier to eat before we take them over here to the skillet and uh, do a quick flash saute on them uh, to impart some uh, flavor with the red chilies and the garlic. And then we'll be ready to pull off our uh, meat, let it rest for a few minutes, slice it, and we'll make some great grilled Italian pork sandwich. All right, so we have moved our broccolini over from the gas grill over here. We ran out of gas, the fun of a gas grill. That's why I always like to cook on charcoal because you know how much charcoal you have. Uh, so we've got that. Uh, it's been boiling in here for a few minutes. Uh, we've got a saute pan. We're going to put a little extra virgin olive oil in here. And you can see this is pretty hot. Probably putting in somewhere in the neighborhood of a, about a quarter of a cup. And we're going to throw in uh, some crushed red peppers here. Again, do this to taste. You know, if you want it hot, put more in there. If you don't want it so hot, don't put quite as much in there. And we've got about three cloves of garlic that we have minced that we're going to put in there. Just let that saute for a few seconds and then start bringing over your broccoli rabe or broccolini, whichever one you can find. And then we want to take about a quarter of a cup, this is a half cup, but about a half of that, so about a quarter of a cup of the liquid, and put that in there. I'm going to move this off now. Bring this over the heat. Let all those flavors really penetrate. And we're gonna cover this here for a few minutes to let that really soak in. And then over here, we'll show you our, our pork. We're gonna 
check on them. This one here is a little smaller, so it's probably closer to being done. We're looking for around uh, 185 or so on these, 190. This one's a little, little more cooked. Um, there it is right there is pretty good in that part. This one here was thicker, so we're probably still, we're still about six degrees away from that. So while that's going, we're going to pull this one off here, which is done, and we're going to let that rest for a couple minutes. It's important that you let your meat rest uh, when you pull it off the grill. You don't want to just cut right into it, or you're going to have a lot of the flavor leave and it's going to become dry because you're going to have all that moisture uh, that has been opened up um, once you cut it just run so let it cool a little bit to tighten back up and suck back in those those juices which uh, like i say are going to give you both the flavor and both the moisture that you're looking for in a nice piece of meat and this goes for not just this dish but steak or uh, brisket or anything that you're doing so we're gonna let this rest for a couple minutes uh, it should give us time to have our broccolini uh, ready to go and we'll assemble the sandwich all right so we have let the pork loin sit for about four minutes here just to really let it take in uh, all of its moisture so we're gonna just kind of slice this into real thin pieces um, again this doesn't have to be a science. You're not looking for the most beautiful pieces. You're just looking for the most tasty pieces. But you want to be kind of thin. So you want a nice sharp knife. I probably should have sharpened this one a little bit better before I started cutting, but we're already committed, so let's do it. So we still have our broccoli rob on the grill cooking. Um, we're going to pull that off at the very last minute. We want that nice and hot when it comes off. So we've got our meat. We're going to take, actually before we put our meat on there, we're going to take some of this smoked provolone and stick this in the bottom here. Make a nice bed of that. and the heat from the meat and from the broccoli rob is gonna help melt that. And we're just gonna start stuffing this in here. I don't know about you, but I think we could use a little more meat. Tastes good. Now we're gonna come over here. And we're gonna pull off our very hot skillet. And we're just gonna take a couple of these and lay them right on top. Get some of that garlic and crushed red pepper in there as well. And there you go. Grilled Italian pork sandwich. Pretty simple, pretty quick, and a really delicious meal. All right, we're gonna make a real simple side dish called Texas caviar. Uh, it's a black-eyed pea salad with some fresh vegetables, uh, a little bit of uh, acidity from some vinegar, some lemon ju or lime juice, excuse me, a little heat from some uh, jalapeno peppers, but it's a delicious, delicious side dish. It's something you can get at the restaurant, Pork Barrel Barbecue Restaurant over in Alexandria, and it's a, a real top seller for us. So we're just gonna use today a couple cans of canned black-eyed peas. Uh, you could use dried black-eyed peas and soak them but uh, these are, are just as good and a lot quicker. We have two-thirds cup of extra virgin olive oil, two-thirds cup of red wine vinegar, and then we've got the juice of two limes. So we're gonna put these in our juicer 
and just squeeze these out right over the bowl. Now I, th I like to make this at least 24 hours in advance of serving it if I can uh, to really allow all the flavors to meld together. Uh, it really becomes better with time. You can certainly eat it right after you make it, but it is going to be better on day two, I promise you, than it is on that first day. All right, so we got all of our acidity in there. Now we're going to go ahead and put our vegetables in. We've got one red bell pepper, one yellow bell pepper. Uh, we've got about a cup of white onion, a cup of red onion, a third a cup of jalapenos. Now, if you don't like things spicy, you could certainly leave the jalapenos out. If you like things really hot, you could either add additional jalapenos or you could go with a hotter pepper uh, like a, a serrano or even a habanero. Uh, we've got about three uh, cloves of garlic minced and then about uh, four tablespoons of fresh cilantro. So we're just going to pour all this here into the bowl. You know, you can also add some of your um, own ingredients to this uh, to make it unique for yourself. Grilled corn is really good in here. Uh, that's, that's a real nice touch. So again, you know, with cooking, I always believe that it's what makes you happy um, that you should be doing. So just because it's a recipe doesn't mean you have to follow it 100%. So we're now just going to mix all this up. And this is a real nice, colorful salad, too. Makes a, a real pretty side dish for any of your main barbecue meals, like uh, ribs and brisket, pulled pork. It's also a great chip dip. Um, you know, if you got folks coming over for a game or you're going picnicking or something like that, make up a batch of this, bring some tortilla chips, and uh, it's really, really good. So now we're going to add about a tablespoon of black pepper, and I'm just going to shake it in there. about a teaspoon of salt, maybe slightly more than a teaspoon. Let's go with one and a half teaspoons of salt. And then we like to kick ours up just a little bit by putting a couple of teaspoons of our pork barrel all-American spice rub in there. And then again, just stir all that up to incorporate. Stick this in your refrigerator overnight if you can. Let all these flavors melt together and you've got one really nice side dish, Texas caviar. There's nothing like a good grilled dessert during the summer uh, when peaches are ripe and delicious. This is a great dessert. This is a grilled peach with a raspberry mint mash on it. Uh, I think uh, one of my all-time favorite grilled desserts. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do it for you and see what you guys think. So we're going to go ahead and cut a couple of peaches in half. Now you don't want super ripe peaches on this. You want something that's just probably a couple days from being perfectly ripe because you want to have a little bit uh, more texture than a, a ripe peach and also that, uh, well, that is what we call a pit that was easy to cut through. I'll tell you what, we're just going to go with another peach. So you cut your peaches in half here, pull out the pit. Stone peaches, not glass. That's right. You put a little canola oil on them, just a little bit, so they don't stick to the grill. And we're going to take a little bit of light brown sugar and sprinkle it on them, just to kind of add another little dimension of sweetness. Come over to our grill. And we're going to go directly over the fire. And let these guys get some nice char marks on them. Get that natural sugar and the peaches to caramelize. 
That's going to take just a couple minutes. While we're doing that, we're going to take a handful of raspberries, probably somewhere in the vicinity of a three quarters of a pint or so. And we're going to rough, rough chop these guys up. I call this a mash. I'm not sure if that's the technical term or not, but that's what, what we've always called it, doing them. We're going to take some mint. This is a fresh spearmint here. Uh, you can use peppermint, whatever kind of mint you have available. And we're going to go ahead and rough chop that up. And then we're going to mix that in with our raspberry mixture. Now we're going to go check our peaches. Just give them a, a turn here. That's really what we're looking for there. That's looking good. Looking nice. Then we're going to take some creme fraiche. Now, if you don't have creme fraiche, you can use a homemade whipped cream or you could even use Cool Whip, something you get at the store. We're going to put a little bit of agave uh, in there or you could use some honey, um, whatever you got, just to give it a little sweetness. So we're going to probably put about tablespoon in there. Mix that up. All right. Now we're going to pull, just for fun, a couple martini glasses. You could certainly serve this on any kind of a plate, family style. Put peach half in each of these. That nice caramelization. We're going to start this by in the middle putting a nice dollop of this raspberry mint mash that we made up. Then we're going to take and drizzle some of this creme fraiche over that. I'm going to take a little milk chocolate. We're going to grate that right over the top. Oops. And I like to finish this off with a couple of whole raspberries. And a nice mint sprig right in the middle. And if we can find a good one here, this isn't the best looking mint I've ever seen. And there you go. A real simple, quick dessert. Uh, sure to please your guests. It's really delicious. A grilled peach with raspberry mint mash. <laughs>